Hola, comadres. Welcome to another episode of Comadreando. I'm your host, Marcy, and today I am joined by two awesome guests, Lenning and Selena, and I will let them introduce themselves. Who are you? You sure. can go first, Selena. Okay. okay. <laughs> I am, my name is Selena. I am an educator. I met Marcy through one of my friends um, that's also part of podcast. Um, club and um yeah we met we had something in common with um children on the spectrum and this this is why i'm here today thank you okay go ahead lenny yeah i'm lenny uh i met i met marcy uh when i was uh, a little baby so <laughs> that's my big sister um <laughs> <laughs> you know aiden aiden is my nephew i um, love him to death um and yeah what i i I do uh, HR. I'm a people um, analytics specialist, so that's my career. Um, yeah, excited to be here. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on the show today. All right. So today's topic is this season, this new season, guys. This is um, you guys are we're recording as part of season two. And um, the topic is the uncle and aunts of people with special needs. And um, the reason why I want to do this, I want I want this season to be geared towards um, the village, like the people that help parents and children of special needs in a like really profound way and um you know kind of highlight all you guys do which is not necessarily always acknowledged so i want to um you know give you guys your flowers now <laughs> oh, thank so you. um i wanted to know um honestly like what it was like what is like for um aunts and uncles of children with special needs like uh like what it what what the experience is like since it's not necessarily your child and like you know what it's been like throughout the years so we're gonna kind of dive into like your nephew or niece and then you're gonna and then we're gonna ask other questions so getting started on the topic um what is your nephew or niece's diagnosis and we can start with Lenny. yep aiden aiden is on the uh autism spectrum. Um, he was diagnosed at a young age. Um, and, and yeah. And you, Selena? And um, my nephew, Dylan, he was diagnosed about three. Um, he was three years old. We started, of course, seeing signs before then, but you know, they don't diagnose them until they turn three. And um, unless it's like a severe case. And he it has moderate, moderate um, autism, and he also has um, apraxia, so speech disorder, because oh, he's wow. nonverbal. Okay. Oh, okay, that's good. Um, so, what was it that you guys started noticing in your in your in Dylan when when he when you first when he before he got diagnosed? Well, before he got diagnosed, he, you know, I, when he was a baby, he would answer and he would look when you would call him. You know, um, then it became, uh, and then he would say a few words like mama, dada. He would eat food, whatever food you introduced him to. But then um, as the years went on, he started not responding to his name. Um, he would, he passed the parallel play age and he was still parallel play. It was just on his own by himself. Um he was doing, he had a few flapping incidents, not that as many, but there were certain instances. And my sister always knew she's a social worker. She's like, there's something not right. You know, she didn't know that it was autism, but she kept on saying, you know, there's nothing not right. She would ask me because I'm an educator as well. So it's just, we were going back and forth. You know, I would just suggest let's rule everything out. Let's, I think you should go with the, the evaluation and that's when everything happened and we were we found out wow okay and um so did he ever have speech or or he he never got to talking he never got to talking the you know he babbled when he was a a, a baby in mm -hmm. infant and mama dada but um he really like right now he's nine and all he says is juice juice mm -hmm. And he communicates with his, um, he has like a, a like a, a communication tablet, device? a communication device that he has. Perfect. All right. And that's what he's going to But he has been, you know, 
I've noticed a bit di a difference as soon as when I was with him that he is really trying to say words at this point. Yeah. So the the thing uh, with apraxia is that um, I don't know. So the, for the listeners, so basically it's a, a, imped a speech impediment, and um, to, it's to the extent that the kids right. are not really able to speak. So the the whole thing is um, they have receptive language. It's not that they are not comprehending what's going on. So right. the receptive language is the language that you understand what's going mm -hmm. on. And, right. um, you, you know, you can put things into context. The only thing is that you're not communicating, um, traditionally, right? You're not using right. words precisely. You can use gestures or you can use, um, usually for kids with that have that, um, they do, uh, sign language or they use a communication device like what Dylan is using. Um, right. I don't know. I don't. I don't think I've talked about communication devices. So basically, it's um, they set up an iPad with a um, basically a picture system that the child has like a certain vocabulary on there, and it, it can be situational, right? It can be right. like for uh, when you're going to eat, when you're going outside, when you're in school, the bathroom. Yeah, bathroom, mm -hmm. and it has specific vocabulary words, so the kid can like sh actually formulate sentences using the communication device. So I'm yeah. glad that he has that, and that you guys were able to get him the intervention early on, because like right. you said, like I, you see a change in him. Right. right. I, I feel like I, part of the work that I'm doing is like really motivating parents to get that that help early on, and um, you know, support their children in any way they can. And not to give up, you know, Marcy, I wanted to add because the, do and the reason I say that is because the doctor, um, my sister's doctor, pediatrician did tell her, um, one of the developmental pediatricians told her that after a certain age, the, the possibility of him speaking is unlikely, you know, but my sister, we all support her. We never, we haven't given up, you know, he's still nine. They, mm -hmm. I think they gave him into five years old. I think it was or six. Mm -hmm. and we still she still has him on like tons of services we still use help him with the device and you know last the last time i was with him which was not too long ago i i can see that he's there's some type of improvement and he's trying to put the words together to say it great lenny so what has your experience been so since um Aiden's initial diagnosis when he was about 18 months and um, now that he's 13, what have you seen changes in him or what was it that you noticed at the beginning that was not like, um, cause we've been around kids our whole lives. Right. Um, yeah. but what, what was it that you noticed that wasn't, um, quote unquote typical in Aiden? And then like, how have you seen him change over time? Yeah. So, uh, similar to Selena's story, uh, Aiden, when when he was first uh, developing his first uh, maybe a few years um, with pretty typical development, um, noticed you know he was starting to speak a little bit. Um, you know he played with you, he looked you in the eyes. Um, he kind of you know would pay attention, um, but then we started slowly seeing that go away. Um, you know he kind of didn't look you in the eyes anymore. He kind of stopped speaking words, um, and you know other family members noted it as well. Um, and then eventually, um, he took him to get diagnosed, um, and he got the autism diagnosis. Um, and you know, it was, it was really, you know, it was really hard at first, you know, cause being in a, you know, a Dominican family, it's not something that we're used to. Um, right. you know, mm -hmm. all the, the Diaz and Theos, you know, they, they, they try to speak to Aiden or they, they, sorry, they used to try to speak to Aiden and kind of get a response or like, you know, he's not like looking them in the eyes and they kind of. They might, they might think it's disrespectful or something like that. You know, so it mm -hmm. kind of took a lot of training um, from from all of us, you know, mainly you, Misoti, um, to kind of uh, to teach them, like, hey, this is, Aiden is not a typical, um, you know, child. He's, he's not like, you know, other kids you're going to see. He's not going to respond to this. He's not going to respond to, like, yelling or those kinds of things. Um, yeah. So that, that was a big, you know, part of the process was kind of just the, the training of everyone else. Um, you know, but as as he was in his programs, um, his his early intervention programs, um, I did feel like um, you know he he would respond a little bit better. Um, his behavior was kind of a little bit um, you know he he was able to control his you know so he, he would get some tantrums sometimes, but that definitely got better over time. Um, and he he began to listen more. Um, 
you know, when you told him, Hey, then you can't, you can't have this right now. You can't do this. Um, you know, he would actually listen to us. Um, and, you know, I think what I noticed was, you know, he, he became like really fixated with the iPad and, um, the iPhone or, or, you know, at the mm -hmm. time he used to have an iTouch, you know, um, and a lot of parents see that as negative, but with Aiden, that's like his, his outlet, right? That's his outlet for one creativity, um, two for learning, you know? So mm -hmm. it was something that, you know, we kind of, over time we learned like, you know, this isn't like, sure he can't be on it every single hour of the day, but it's okay if he's on it because he's getting something out of it. Um, you know, it's really helping him um, express himself a little bit, you know? So that's something that I kind of like, you know, well, like I, I never got annoyed or bothered that he was always on his iPad or anything like that, you know. So that's something that um, you know, I, I kind of had to learn as well. Um, and what's well, sorry, what's the second part of the question? No, that's it. Like, how that's have it. you seen him change over time? Like you said, yeah. that the behavior has gotten better, and that it, the speech has gotten better as well, right? Like now Absolutely. he like actually yeah. can formulate sentences, and he's doing Absolutely. like. Um, Selena, he's actually having like turn taking conversations, which is big because you know, mm -hmm. for us, it's like for us, it's like, oh, whatever, we talk, we talk to people all the time. That's great. But before it was kind of like you'd say hi to him, he'd say one thing back, but then there wouldn't be another response, you know. So now it's right. like we're up to two turns now. So he'll you'll say something to him, he'll respond, you say something back, and then he'll respond again. So we're up to two now, which is like a big deal. Some people are like, oh, whatever. That's nothing. But that's it's, a big, it's, to that's... us, it's a big deal because it's yeah. like he wasn't really like he wasn't even like really aware. Not that he wasn't aware. He knew we were there, but he wasn't interested. Mm -hmm. Right. It wasn't his thing. Right. He was just kind of like, whatever. Um, so and those are. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I just wanted to add, those are some of the progresses that I've seen with Dylan, not the word form, the, the formulation of the words, but for for instance, before it's like, hi, Dylan, and he will come in and say, hi, Dylan. You know, now my sister will say, Dylan, wave hi to Thea, wave hi, and he'll say hi, right? Mm -hmm. As to before, it's That's just awesome. like, okay, you know, which is great. Yeah, it's a, it's yeah, it's a progress. Awesome. It's a, the it's little a, it's things, a, you Yeah, know? little victories, you know, it, it really right. you know, it means a lot. It does. The other day, um, with our other brother, because I have two brothers, um, he went to visit. Like he, he went to my mother's house, and my brother's there. And he went goes upstairs. He's like, "Hey, Uncle Oliver, how are you today?" Like, kind of oh. like initiate. But he's initiating the conversation. So for me, that's big. And and then like the fact yeah. that Dylan's actually responding, like he's right. aware of you and responding, even if it is with a gesture, is yeah. so big. So guys, um, no judgment what was your initial reaction to the news? Cause like, like we said, right, we're Dominican. Um, we have it. We come from a generation that we weren't really aware about what autism was. I, I know I didn't grow up with anybody that I knew like outwardly because of the, the fact that the diagnosis there, people were not where people were not being diagnosed. Right. There was people that right. were quote unquote, not the same, like different than us. And um, there were, there were people in um, special education classes but we didn't know the extent of their, you know, disability or their special need. So right. what was your initial reaction to the news? Like, what was it that went through your head initially or, or you know, did you feel bewildered or like, what were your feelings in that moment? Well, in my case, you know, um, since I'm in the field, um, I'm, I'm a professional certification teacher, UPK teacher. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm familiar with what it is. However, even though, you know, you have your feelings, like there's something not right, you know, and you share that. And I share that with my sister when she asked me, um, but to know the real diagnosis, it's, you know, heartbreaking because you don't want to, even though you know about it, you know, somewhat, but you don't want to see it. You don't, you don't want to have it like that close to home, you know? It's easier to go to a school and help that child, you know, and say, okay, you know, support that child the best way you can. But to have it at home, to know that my nephew it doesn't have the words to communicate, you know, that he sees the world differently, you know, that when we would go out to a restaurant, he had he would hide under a table because it was so overwhelming for him. This restaurant is so big, you know, it was just like heartbreaking. I have to be honest. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. You know? 
You know, you want to do whatever you can to support my sister and to support him. You know, we, we knew about it. Like I said, she's, she's a social worker. Um, I'm a teacher. So it's just, we knew about it, but to happen at home, it's a total different ball game. You know, mm-hmm. it's still heartbreaking. My parents, my father's like, no, es el que está mal criado. you know, when he was, you know, he'll have his tantrums and he'll like, um, mm-hmm drop he just needs to be around other kids and etc etc he wasn't understanding that it's not that's not what it is Mm -hmm. you know my mom is more you know you let her you teach her and she'll be she'll follow along she's like oh okay i understand oh i've seen it in the news you know Mm -hmm. and my my younger sister she's aware too she's she's in the field too she's a nurse so Mm -hmm. it's just like we were aware the sisters but our parents were having a bit more of a hard time with it than anybody yeah, it's else. That generational, that generational um, yeah. difference, and and also like, you know, the stigma. There's a lot of stigma. Exactly. That's, you know, being quote unquote different or not not following um, the green or what society right calls normal. You know. Right. Yeah, my father to this day, he's nine, and he'll still say, "Because well, he, well, what she needs to do is come over here because she moved to Westchester, like mm-hmm. Dutchess County. She's far, so mm-hmm. she's he needs to be around us, and you know that's gonna help him." You yeah. know, Cynthia, my sister's like, "No, he needs to be in the best schools and get the best services." True, you know. So yeah, well, it's hard uh, for him. Selena, if you don't mind me asking, what setting is he in right now, Dylan? Is he like what, in what? a six to one to one? Like what setting? What school setting? ICT um, six to one to one, twelve he, to one. No, I think he's in an eight to one. Oh, to that's one. great. That's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that means that even though he's not verbal, he's still social. Cause like, and he can function with more children. He doesn't he could. need that. Like, he doesn't need like that direct, like more like the smallest ratio, which is pretty good. Yeah, I think I think is the eight. I think the eight to one. I don't think is the six. I can't. Don't quote me on that one, okay. but I think is I'm almost <laughs> I'm almost, I'm almost thinking it is the eighth. But he he is a little he is social in a way. He's a very sweet kid, you know. He's not gonna play, you know, like take turns back and forth. Mm-hmm. But he can be in a group, you know, of eight, and then he has his teachers that do work with him, you mm-hmm. know, one on one. So, but I think it's eight. I'm not sure. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Same question for you, Lenny. So what was your initial reaction to the news when uh, Aiden first got diagnosed? Yeah. I mean, at first, you, you, you know, it's pretty shocking because um, like, wow. like I said earlier, like he was developing normally, like, you know, like a typical kid, you know, um, you saw, you know, the pro- normal progression and then the kind of, it really just kind of stops, you know, and that's really shocking to me. Um you know, but then, um, you know, then, you know, it, it's a little bit heartbreaking, but then, you know, you kind of start educating yourself. Cause when, when I, when, if, when we first learned about it, I was still in high school, I was young myself. So it was, I didn't know a lot of, you know, much about autism or, you know, any, any of those kind of disorders. Um, so I, I kind of start learning from, from my sister, Misoti, um, and just kind of looking at different resources, you know, at that time, social media, you know, was still you know was was a thing so i was kind of following different accounts and stuff like that to learn a little bit more um you know so once once i kind of educated myself a little bit more about it you know it's just nothing but support and love um for for aiden and, and marcy um and just uh you know and also you, I, you get a little defensive too right because you know of course there's people that aren't going to understand in your life right um you know some people in aiden's life as well that don't, don't understand you know um and and Marcy going through, you know, what you were going through at the time and with his dad as, as well, you know, kind of you get very defensive, you know, because Aiden, you know, he, he at that age um, and still to this day, you know, it's tough. He, he doesn't kind of understand what's going on sometimes, you know, so you have to kind of be there for him to like, you know, make sure, you know, everyone's treating him right and that kind of stuff, too. Right. Yeah. Right. So one thing, one thing that I um, observe a lot is like how people interact with him, and I'm sure Selena's the same way, and and your sister, um, you know, I observe how people interact with him, and Aiden's very good about reading energy. I know Lenny knows, but like if he sees that you're like not don't have the best intention for him, he will not fuck with you. Like 
legit is he's like That's hey so and he kind of goes in his own yeah he does not yeah, yeah he'll 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 be like let's go home like if he's somebody he doesn't like to be he's like all right time to go let's just go to grandma's house <laughs> yeah oh, like wow. so if aiden feels comfortable and the energy is good he'll take off his shoes he'll get comfortable first he'll be entremetido and like investigate your house right go right. and check out everything to make sure mm-hmm. everything's safe then he'll find a corner you sit there, take off his shoes, and just chill out until it's time to go. But if the energy's off, he is not with the shits. He's like, right. okay, yeah. when are we going to grandma's house? <laughs> right. <laughs> I think my sister, that has happened with me, but I think my sister did mention something like that about Dylan, that she's gone places. And he's like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, he'll just stay stuck with her, and he won't, like, go out and explore. Mm-hmm. He's just like, yeah, like, no, like, he didn't have that good feeling. My sister, I think she's mentioned something like that, that he does the same thing. Mm-hmm. Right. So I wanted to ask questions. Um, Selena, do you have any children? Yes, I do. I have a 14-year-old daughter. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, okay. So when, all right, when you had your daughter, what was it like, you know, after, because she was five when Dylan got diagnosed, right? How was it like explaining to her about his disability and like teaching her how to be accepting of Dylan. Cause I'm sure your child, cause because you are a teacher, like she's a little bit more open-minded, but you right. know, children are children at the end of the day. So yeah. like, what was it that you did to like help them have like a healthy relationship as cousins? And I, and I have to say at the beginning, it was difficult because Dylan was a biter. Right. Mm, okay. So, and, and she was young and then she wouldn't understand as to why is my cousin biting me? Like why? And then, you know, of course I had to explain, you know, that some children, he would get really excited when he would bite. He wasn't as a malicious, he wasn't doing it maliciously. Mm-hmm. He would just get really excited or if he wanted, if he felt like he needed to communicate something and he couldn't, this is what he's going to go do. But he also has like sensory processing um, mm-hmm. issues. Like he drools, he always has like a chewy toy also. Mm-hmm. So, um, the drooling has gotten much better though. I don't see him drooling, but he wets his clothes cause he's always like chewing on something. He doesn't mm-hmm. have his chewy toy. So, um, you know, I always had to explain to him, like to her, like, it, you know, I understand. I know it hurts, you know, acknowledge her feeling and then say, you know, but this is what's going on. You know, Dylan has difficulties communicating. And sometimes when children want to communicate and they're excited to see you, this is how they express themselves. It's unfortunate. And I know it hurts, but you know, we're going to try our best, you know, for him not to do that and teach him, you know, other ways to do it. So she was, she would be hesitant sometimes because she would be scared. Like if he's going to bite her, but then he got better after that, and and Megan is very compassionate, compassionate towards him. Yeah, she's grown to be like that's my cousin. You know, he's different. We have to treat him in a different way. You know, in, in a different way, meaning and in, try to inc- include him in everything. But n- it's not like how do you say it? like you can't say no, stop that, and he's gonna right away understand it, right? Yeah. You have to say no, or let me get his 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 device. So I can show him, let me see if he can tell me what it is that he wants. Mm-hmm. You know, little things like that we had to teach her. That's awesome. All right, guys, mm-hmm. give me one second. I have to get the door. Don't, <laughs> don't go anywhere. It's okay. <laughs> How old is Aiden now? Aiden, I think he's, he's just turned, uh, I want to say just turned 10. Yeah. So. Oh, wow. Oh, so they're about the same age. Yeah, just about. Yeah. yeah, just about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Aiden, Aiden, Aiden had a little bit of a, a biting phase. Um, he did. Yeah, he did. But um, you know, we we just kind of had to always kind of remind like, that show him different ways to express his emotions because I think it came out of exactly it came out of frustration a lot of times, right? And which a lot of yeah. like those behaviors yeah. come out of is like. He doesn't know how to kind of express that frustration. So we kind of right. have to teach him different ways to, to express that. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think I, I said, I said 10. I, he's, he's Aiden. Aiden's going to be 14. I'm right, something. He's a grown man. Yeah. He's 13. I'm about to be 14. Yeah. I, did, I just, oh I, 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 thought, I thought the year. I was like, wait a minute. That doesn't add up. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, the maths are not math and man. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah so, <laughs> so 
same qu- well Lenin doesn't have any children yet but how do you feel that you're gonna approach that eventually because Aiden's gonna be older even when you have kids Lenny just got married by the way Selena so yes. um <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> the kids are not in the cards for now but like you know yeah. eventually when you do have children what how do you how do you think that you're going to you know address that and um educate your kids as well um I think first of all just like spend spend a lot of time with Aiden and just kind of um, from a young age so they kind of are always used to it right I think it's easier um teach kids when they're younger you know certain things so it's mm-hmm. as they grow older it just it just becomes normal to them right um and then you know I think just answering their answering questions truthfully like a lot of times adults kind of sugarcoat things or like kind of you know just kind of explaining it a way that you know Aiden's different, right? He's not like you and me, but you know, he still loves you and you know, he's right. he's you know, he's 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 an awesome uncle or whatever, you know. What like however I gotta explain that in the future. So that sounds good. Does the does, does it make you wary? And uh, Selena, I don't know if you plan on having more children or or I mean Lenny is gonna have more kids, but does it make you wary that your kids may be on no. the spectrum? <laughs> Selena's like, hell no. no. I'm not having any more. <laughs> Period. <laughs> but, um, I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> if, 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 because we can't say no, if you were to have another child, do you, or does it make you scared that your kid may be on the spectrum in the future? I think there's a possibility if it, if it happened to my sister, I, I, I assume so. Mm-hmm. It does. It's kind of, well. It would make me scared because of my age. <laughs> You're like I'm too old for this. <laughs> I'm too old for that. <laughs> so it's like okay, that was an accident. <laughs> and, yeah, I'm scared now, but um, yeah, yeah, it is scary. There's always a risk, you know. No matter what age, no matter what, there's always that risk that you're taking. Yeah. You know, when 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 a mom, when someone comes out pregnant. So the like for our family, we don't really have anybody that's on the spectrum. Like we have people with disabilities, but it's not necessarily autism. And it's like one or two people. But like from what I know from like the immediate, not immediate family, not nuclear, but like the extended family, maybe one or two people have a disability. But that was never something that I was like, it could happen, you know, and then it was like, when it happened, it was, like, very shocking to me. It was, like, I had to, like, wrap, wrap my mind around it because it was, like, you know, you get pregnant and then you have this expectation right? that things are going to be a certain way and then that kind of gets taken away from you. So um, it was just, How like, about your huge, husband? Huge, huge, your husband's side. I don't really know his family like that, but um, that we know of. But he's, he's a little... I'm not going to... Not different in that way. Um, he has, I want to say, like, emotional issues. So, like, um, I don't know. He always has issues at work with certain things. But I don't think it's a disability. I think it's more narcissism. So, But is it social? Is it he's social, he's like- pretty so, but he is pretty, he's pretty social though. Like he, he like, likes to hang out with people and go to parties and do all these things. So it, it's not so much a social piece. It's more like his issue is like, I feel like it's, it's, it's behavioral, right? Learning. I mean, yeah. mm-hmm. emotional. Yeah, you put that very diplomatically. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it's funny that you say that Marcy because after we learned about we know you know my sister it got even you know she learned about Dylan and everyone you know learned even more we have this uncle that he was socially awkward but he would mm. communicate with you right and but he was just socially awkward and in the sense that you tell him hola como mimo como tu ta and he was like si 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 bien 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 you know, and he'll answer like that. But we always thought it was like normal. Mm-hmm. But then it's not, like afterwards, like, of course, after my sister doing intense research, it's not that we have anybody in the family, but he seemed like to be um, what well, used to be called Asperger's. But, um, you know, we he was never diagnosed because as like you mentioned before. Autism, wow. Right. Right. 
I mean, and, we and, have an uncle, but his thing was he was fine, but he literally like it was like an accident. My aunt and him, they were like toddlers. They were jumping on the bed in in, in Santo Domingo, and you know those floors are cement. So he yes. fell off the bed and hit his head. So he had a concussion. And then after the concussion, my mom, because mom is older. She's the oldest. Well, not the oldest, the third. It's nine of them. So she's like number three. So she's the one that had to take care of all the other smaller right. children. So she said that after that, like he was not the same again. But he's definitely kind of like, um, you talk to him about one thing and he te salta con otra cosa. But mom oh. says that it was after the accident. But it was like a severe accident. Like, yeah, he could have. Those floors are hard. You know? Yeah. So, um, yeah. I mean, yeah, and then we have a cousin. But um, grandma says that it was because um, my aunt used to have a cat and she used to ki change the kitty litter. Mm -hmm. um, and the cats have a bacteria. I don't know. You know how the It's like, it's. That's the. It's also, yeah, it, it, it became, it's part of like the whole, like, like you said earlier, like. This wasn't really ever diagnosed, right? So they would kind of come up with all these right. stories of why people are the way they are, right? Because there wasn't a way to diagnose it. There wasn't a yeah. test that they gave, like, you know, so it's right. like, oh, this person's like this because of so like this crazy story. It's right. like, is that true, right? Or is it just like right. this person had yeah. a undiagnosed undiagnosed right. disability, right? Yeah, because mm -hmm. if we look, at, we have an older cousin. She's actually the oldest of, out of all of us, Karina. I feel she might be on the spectrum, honestly, because like if we look at like the things that she does, she has a disability. Like developmentally, she seems younger, right? Which is some like part of the autism thing, right? And then she has a mind. She knows everybody in the family's birthday, like every cousin, all the aunts, all the uncles, mm -hmm. and she doesn't interact with them on a daily basis. So. It's, 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 it's interesting. Like, I would love to have her, like, you know, evaluated now. But, like, you know, I, I, I don't think they would do it because, like, one, they have to probably pay money for that over there. Mm. And two, um, you know, they're like, oh, she's already older. Like, she's older than me. She's, like, in her 40s already. So I don't, mm. I don't know how, how, um, how willing they would be to, to actually test have her evaluated out. or tested. Yeah. That's interesting because uh, there's this uh, person that he um, he's from uh, my, my town where I went to high school um, and he's, you know, everyone knows him and um, oh, he said the birthday about. thing and that's like, mm -hmm. he has the same thing where he knows everyone's birthday, like people that aren't even it's like his family, like people that just live in the town, like, you know, like friends of mine and stuff like that, you know, and um, he'll put like a birthday post up for them um, He's and he's diagnosed um, on the spectrum. Um, oh. so that's a good funny coincidence so you said that so um, and yeah. you know what's funny the, yeah. when we first because we we didn't always live we i lived in jersey with my mom after um i was like in college already when we moved in and, and lenny was gonna start high school and um we met him but i never had interactions with him but he would like see me in the town and be like hey you're Lenny's sister hi how are mm -hmm. you and he literally knew everybody yeah. in the town. He'd be he's like, so, oh, he's like so friendly, like nice. He's guy. a great person. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah. But I, I was just gonna say to, to your um, other question about you know having. So I mean, I've, it's, it's crossed my mind before, um, mm -hmm. but I feel like you've done such an amazing job with Aiden, and you're such a good like resource. Like you know, if that were to happen to me one day, like where I had a kid that had autism or whatever. Um, you know, I like to have you to kind of like show me, you know, the ins and outs and, you know, teach me all these things. Yeah. I agree with my sister too. I would definitely go to her. She would be my number one resource. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, right. of course it's like, you know, we don't want that, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, we'll be okay. Right. Yeah. So I wanted to ask, okay, so what are some of the most joyful or challenging memories that you have had with? your your nephews well the, um the joyful is uh, he, he's like s the sweetest kid you would ever you you can uh, you can meet he he gives you hugs he's hu he hugs you you know he's he's very happy um you know he he 
you know, you tickle him, he's laughing. He's always like happy, you know, all, all around. You know, the most challenging is when he drops, right? Trying to get him up. So when he gets, he, when he has a tantrum. No, he doesn't have to have a tantrum. He, he'll, for example, he does two things, right? If you come here to my house, he gets, he wants to just, he gets fixated on doorknobs, right? And he just wants to go doorknobs and doorknobs and he'll just go and he'll come over here, take my hand and go and take him to the doorknob. Sometimes so of course he's he telling me he, that he wants to leave. He jiggles the, he jiggles the doorknob? Yeah. He oh, just okay. Op- like I try can see to how that it. is soothing. Yeah. Like he tries to go open it, open it. I mean, there were times that before it was the, the, the faucets, he would open the faucets and mm-hmm. he just wanted to play with the water, you know, because it's a sensory thing for mm-hmm. him. So now he moved over to the, to the, um, doorknobs. So the doorknobs, he's always like, um, moving them and then he'll come and he'll get me. So if he's here, it's not like we can sit, you know, and I can play, you know, play with him or whatever he's watching in the, in in his ipad you know he'll come hold my hand and he has to go like constantly that's a constant thing Mm -hmm. going on but my sister's main challenge which was huge and i was like desperate in trying to help her was that when he was coming off the bus the school bus he would drop and he would not want to move and it was in the street i mean the bus is there stop He ha- he just drops and he-, he doesn't do it. I don't think anyone as often, but she had to get like this huge stroller to put him in the stroller to, so he could move it. So we could take him inside the house. Mm. He would not want to move. And he's a big boy. Girl. And that's, to- yeah. So then you went to Yanda, and then, you know, as a teacher, we're not supposed to touch the children. Right. Right. So this little boy, um, I'm just going to call him K. K would like, he would not want to do something. And his, first of all, he used to bounce around the classroom on his tiptoes the whole day. So if you think about that exercise, right, your whole body right. is like a muscle. So mm-hmm. this little boy, cuando el hacía fuerza para abajo, that's it. Like, and he was skinny and he was little, he was five. And let me tell you, there was no moving him. And I was lifting weights. Like, I was in the gym. Mm-hmm. And there was no moving this little boy. And he did it to me in the street. I had to grab him through under his armpits, right? And another teacher, because he did it in the street, in the crosswalk. And we had to, like, put him, like, bring him to the school building. And then once we, we got there, we let him, ten, like, have his moment, right? Mm-hmm. And then once he was done... I'm like, hey, Kevin, do you want to eat some, sorry. I'm like, hey, do you want to eat some cookies in the classroom? He's like, sure, Missy. And then he got up, wiped his little tears, and went on his merry way. So wow. it, I, I could see how it's difficult because, like, Aiden didn't have that particularly. The only thing with Aiden, it's more, it's easy to redirect him now. Not so much back then. Yeah, it's getting there with Dylan. Now I see my sister, she can redirect him at times. Like he, he seems a bit more mature in that sense. But when he, and, and the, the, the doorknob thing is just his fixation, you know, uh, in the sensory um, processing. It's not that he's having a tantrum or anything. And he's walking around with his hair pod, you know, he'll put his hair pod in, in his ear so he can hear it. But at the same time, he's walking to the doorknobs and he'll go to the front doorknob and to my bathroom front and he'll go back and forth. And if no one is um, there, I will call him and he didn't come on. He'll come and then he holds your hand and mm. walk you to it, you know. Mm. But the dropping, my sister struggled just to hear her stories was like heartbreaking. I felt helpless. Like, oh, my God, what can I do to help? I would give her tips. And I'm like, did you try this? Did you do this? You know, it, it was hard. Yeah. I totally understand that. Yeah. What about you learning anything joyful or challenging? Like yeah, I mean, so I mean the, the dropping thing. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Aiden wasn't really like a big uh, dropper. Like every once in a while he would. Um, but I feel like he was a big runner, you know, and that's like, I, I used to have to like, like we, we all did, but I remember like, it was like, oh we, we were at a resort in DR and he just started sprinting down the hallway and like, you know, I was like, I've always, I've always been working out and stuff. So like, I used to have to like, 
I, that whole that whole weekend, I was just like sprinting after him, <laughs> chasing. And that, that was when that was when we were and he was younger. And he really didn't listen, you know. So I was just like, he had me like running laps. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and Selena, he took off like a little Guinea, like a little, you know, a, a guinea hen. Like he just like sprint down. <laughs> yeah. Oh and my he god. He would be laughing though. He he would he would find it amusing. Yes. And I'm like oh, sweating my ass off. Like. <laughs> yeah. Especially in VR. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Letting oh. Letting was always the go-to of like, who am I gonna take with me to do this activity? <laughs> Lenny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I could I could pick him up. I could run after him. Like. <laughs> Thank God. That's why. That, 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 that's why. That's why. That's why you staying in shape. It's for you. Know. <laughs> yeah, good. Good. <laughs> oh my God. Um, oh. What was that he did in the house? Was it he like crawled out the window in the middle oh my of the gosh. winter? Yeah, I was storm? having like my no. It was like my graduation party and in the backyard. Oh my God! Yeah, and I was, that was like with all my friends, like you know, we're just hanging out. Everyone knows Aiden. They they know they know you know like he's autistic and all that stuff. So like. For some reason, I, I I guess he was just like curious or whatever it was. He like crawled like halfway out of the window, the second the second floor of the house. Um, so second like, floor of the house. Yeah. So yes. I like sprinted upstairs and and like like Aiden, you can't do that. Like you know. So um, we we talked to him pretty seriously. We we're like, hey, like, and I don't think ever did it again. Um, Oh my god! Yeah, so we don't. We don't so hate him because I feel like he doesn't understand. Yeah. Like if we're like no, yeah. no, no we don't. We don't put our hands on him. We really just no. talk to him really seriously, mm-hmm. and then you know if it gets really serious, then we take away privileges. So like we're like, all right, if you're doing this, we you cannot have the iPad or you cannot right. have your phone. And he pretty much understands like that. But yeah, he there's been. <laughs> There was yeah. one time. There was one time we were in a resort in DR, and we were, you know, it was like uh, the Hard Rock. He, it's huge. Have you ever been there? It's like a Not little country the inside the Dominican Republic. It's so big, like the, the it's the so many acres, right? So we're on the stupid little trolley because you can't go, you can't really walk to the main anyway. building because it's so far away. So we're on the trolley. We're all sitting. At that time, Aiden was obsessed with these blankets, right? He loved his little blankie. He must have been like four or five. So he had this little blankie that he loved. He would carry it every, literally went to DR. And I would have to wash it all the time. And then Mr. Aiden took off sprinting when we stopped to pick up some people on the trolley. Running towards the pool. I get off. I'm running. Lenny's running. And he gets to the edge of the pool. And we think that he's going to jump in. My heart is in my throat at that point. <laughs> yes. And he decides to throw the blanket in the water. Oh. <laughs> and we were like, oh my God. Yeah. So we like had to fish the blanket out. But dude, it's been like, his thing was like running. Like he would like, we would be having barbecues. He'd be chilling with us back there. Then all of a sudden, se lo ocurre, like, hey, let me go out the front door and go check right. out what's going on in the front. And like he would cross the street. And mm-hmm. <laughs> Dylan was, is a runner too. He's a runner. It's, one day he ran and he disappeared for, I don't even want to say because it's so scary, but mm-hmm. he was lost oh for a good few minutes. Uh, like my sister's husband was out getting him. Everybody was crazy. Our alarms were ringing because my sister has like this thing on his ankle mm. that, uh, and, and all the family members are on it in case he ever gets lost. Everybody gets I alerted. Understand. We're all alerted and we're like, what the hell is going on? Finally, a lady from the neighborhood, my sister's neighborhood, found him. Wow. And then brought him back. But he is a runner too. Yeah. It's really scary. It I mean, does. it scary is. Cause, but it's like, but like, like you said, like, you know, like, we, you, as mad as you are, as like scared as you are, you can't like resort to like, 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 because no. they don't, they don't understand. No. Right. And like, and then he starts like using those physical reactions on other people too. So right, of course. it's just kind of, you know, you want to, and when uh, some people, you know, like, I feel like his, his dad never understood that either. Like, you know, um, and, and yeah. And yeah. So, I, and I think another, like, you know, I mean, all the scary stuff that's happened. Remember, remember the cat Miso thing? My old cat Miso. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> Aiden. Aiden used to love this cat. Like they were like, and and the, the cat was honestly, I was surprised because he wasn't like the friendliest cat. But like he used to like Aiden. He used to hang out with him too. Um, they would like he would like he he would let Aiden pet him, and like Aiden would put his 
his head on the cat like a pillow and the cat would be cool oh. it, like whatever um oh okay <laughs> and i guess like ate him out of like seeing like the cat jumping right because the cat you know cats jump pretty pretty high so like yeah one day for some reason he sees the cat walking and he takes the cat picks him up and like throws the cat like throws from like it was it wasn't like it, it was a little bit of a big fall you know, so I was like really scared because it was like the stairs going downstairs. He threw it over the railing oh. to go downstairs. So I have nine lives. It's okay. Yeah, but like at the time, <laughs> like I the cat wasn't really that athletic, so I was like, oh, oh. Shit, this cat's this cat's done. I was like, no, done. <laughs> I ran downstairs. The cat's fine, um, but I was like, so he gave me such a scare, you know. Um, but like you know, I obviously understand Aiden doesn't understand what he did you know so you're like you can't do that you know but like you know, I, I couldn't get too mad about it you know they, um, yeah. and they I have think, no sense of danger and, and yeah. no think for wow. consequences like they don't think yeah. like this is dangerous this person might get hurt right <sighs> yeah. what no. were you going to say Lenny I'm sorry I interrupted no it's you. okay um, I, I, but I feel like after that he never, he never tried that again and he like understands like you know like animals can't can't fly like you, you can't throw them like that <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah it's like it's like you said like they, they don't really understand like you know like yeah like, i feel like when i was younger i would like do stupid stuff like that like but like every once in a while right um i remember like one time like i like ran across the street like to pet a dog like didn't look across the street at all you know like oh my god but um, I feel like with Aiden, he kind of just like has no like chill, like to like maybe like think <laughs> twice about it. <laughs> but, um, but like happy memories. Did, Sorry, God. No, no, no. Go ahead, finish. No, I was just gonna say there's like so many happy memories. Um, Aiden like makes us laugh like all the time. Like right. we were out to dinner a few months ago for uh, for Albert's birthday. Um, I feel like he's just cracking us up the whole time, right? Like, yeah. and it's his reactions to things, you know, it's always really funny. Um, what was That's it? So he, cute. he, <laughs> we have to teach him like table manners because he, he does stuff in front of us that we're like, oh, you know, whatever, it's Aiden. <laughs> but then we forget that people find that inappropriate in the thing. So he's like, <laughs> we're at dinner and he's like <laughs> drinking soda. And then all of a sudden he like burps, but he looks at the people next to For the us. reaction. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> and he like them what and you like, gonna do about it? <laughs> yeah. oh this is so god. funny. Um, oh my god. They're so like they're so special and it's like it They are. And it's like uh, I've been watching the show as we see it, which is about um I was telling Lenny about it. Uh, it's about three adults on the spectrum, and um, there's this very powerful the message as we see it. Mm -hmm. It's three young adults like they just recently moved out of their houses and they're living independently. This is like in LA or whatever. So um, they're the message that they have in the show is like you know you're you're trying to teach them how to adjust to the world, but it comes to a point that you realize you need to teach the world how to adjust to them because and, um, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's, you know, it's okay for them to be them. It's just, you know, creating an accepting environment where they're going to feel validated and accepted and loved for right. how they are, you know? Exactly. exactly. Um, anything else, Selena, any other joyful memories, anything that stands out? He has two dogs and he's sweet. He's very sweet with them. Aww. Very sweet. Yeah. <laughs> and they lo they protect him. One was being trained like to be his, his service dog. Uh -huh. But I don't know if they finished with the training. They haven't finished with the training. But he's very sweet with them. They are crazy with him. They protect him. And he's he, he's just a sweet boy, you know? He, he's always smiling. He's always laughing. Yeah. That's awesome. All mm -hmm. right. Since you guys are such a great aunt and uncle, um, <laughs> can you guys give some like tips or tricks to aunts or uncles of children who are recently diagnosed? Um, like just kind of about like anything really, anything that you think can help them to understand them better or to prepare um, for that journey because it is a long journey. It is. It is. Um, yeah. I I can I can share like, um, 
like what I do with Dylan when I talk to him, there are times that I, I massage his back. Like I pass my hand, like let's suppose this is his back and I do it with a little bit of pressure because the, the sensory, you know, the processing is just like he needs, you know how when they put, they, some kids use the heavy blanket. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it helps. So I'll talk to him and I'll, I'll, um, massage his back. And I said, tell me, tell me what you want, you know, show me, show me, you know, and it'll calm him down because there's times that he's so excited that he's just like, he's, he's just all over. He's just, he just can't stop, you know, and that's a way that I try to get him to stop. And I massage his, his back and calm him down or give him like a tight, tight hug. So I could, t- you know, so he can calm down. He loves the tight hugs. He loves, loves, loves them. And I think that, I don't know, it just like makes, it feels the pressure and he feels a little bit more secure, I think. And it calms it, it calms him down a bit. Um, I usually get to his eye level to talk to him, you know, making sure before the, the computer device, um, I would always encourage my sister using visual cues. He needed visuals. He needed a schedule. You know, things like that are very important to children in the spectrum. You know, they need to know what's coming next. I think, and and that goes for any child, right? The the the, the more routine you have, the better they behave. Girl. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I need to do put everything in my reminders. Like, okay, let me see what I'm gonna do today. And it's just a routine. You know, the closest. I mean, routines get broken sometimes, right? That's the reality of it. But you, you, if you have the picture, you know, maybe you have that, that alternate picture and say, well, today we're going to go to Tia's house, you know, instead of going to that drive through the McDonald's drive through that you like so much, you know, but as long as you just keep on having that routine and the visual cues are so important, especially to a child that doesn't have the, the language for it. I think that's so helpful. It makes such a difference, awesome. you know, be include them you know, and part of everything, you know, explain to the other people the little bit that you do know and share what it is, you Mm -hmm. know, and let the people know that if they have questions, it's it's okay to ask, Mm -hmm. you know, I think that's so important because some people might feel afraid of asking those questions because they're embarrassed or they don't want to hurt your feelings. But I prefer that you do ask those questions, Mm -hmm. you know, because it's just to support the child, you know, Mm -hmm. to best support the child, you know, we got to do it all together. Awesome. Thank you. Lenny? Yeah, that, that was that was great advice, Selena. Um, I think, uh, you know, number one is patience. You have to be super patient, like with a child that has autism, just because, you know, they're not going to, you know, respond a certain way. And you kind of have to just, um, you know, give them time to understand things and to, to, to learn how, you know, how they should be responding to certain things, right? Um, and I think um, a, a big thing is probably it's it's besides patience. Let me think. Sorry, I, I, had, a, I had a train of thought and I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, That's okay, a big yeah, so, one, though. Patience. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the, the other thing I was going to say um, was. Um, you know, I think I feel like a, a lot of autistic kids, they kind of uh, have certain things that make them feel comfortable, um, certain things that they lean into. Like for Aiden, it's like it's the iPad, right? Um, he loves he loves it. He loves to uh, go on YouTube and look at videos, right? And kind of um, that's almost like his passion, right, in a way. Um, so kind of like accept that and like lean into it and like feed feed that passion, whatever it is, whatever they like to do, feed that, right? Like if if you know your autistic niece or nephew likes to play 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 soccer, whatever it is, or they like to uh, listen to music, then buy them records, right? Buy them equipment, whatever it is. Like Aiden loves the iPad. Um, I'm always trying to find different apps and things like that that he might like, right? Like um, and I, I honestly like so for a while I didn't really. I thought he was just like on YouTube watching videos, right? But then, like, um, honestly, it was like last year. I like, I, 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 like, I, I went on the iPad with him. I, I, was, I just kind of saw what he was doing, and he was like making little videos and editing little videos on the iPad, and that's like incredible. I'm like, how, how did he learn how to do that, right? Like, he's legit, like, cutting up videos on the iPad. So that's like something that he's into, and you know, I want to, I want to try to feed that as much as possible, right? Um, so maybe he kind of learns more about it, right? And and learns learns even like how to do like a skill, right? Um, and maybe he can use it in the future. 
That's great. That is great. That is Marcy, really I wanted good. to ask you, mm -hmm. what, what, what class is he in? He, um, so initially when he first got diagnosed, he was in a six to one to one. Mm -hmm. And, um, I want to say Lenny was, he was like 10 when we got him reevaluated to get in a bigger, in a, in a larger setting. Uh, I think so. Yeah. I want to say yeah, that so, like 2016 or 2017 maybe. Yeah, so the whole time that um, he di he got diagnosed initially, it wasn't autism; it was PDDNOS, so like pervasive right. developmental disorder, disorder, not otherwise specified. So there yeah. was a point um, that he was; it was his last year at the elementary school that he was at, and I noticed that uh, you know because he was supposed to be in a smaller setting, he kept putting being put with children that um, socially were not helping him and mm. academically also I didn't feel like he was being challenged because mm. I know Aiden has the capacity to learn so much. He is so smart. And mm. then the way he understands things yeah. is that he just gets certain things. So I feel like he wasn't being challenged academically. So long story short, I had him reevaluated when he got reevaluated. Um, I spoke to the, the neuropsychologist and he was mm. able to, changed the setting to a 12 to one to one. So right now he's in a 12 to one. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he still has a one to one, but it's not so much for behavior anymore. Cause before I feel like he was acting up more because he, he gets um, overstimulated auditorily overstimulated. So there's um, kids that do that. Um, the uh, um, oral stimming, like the, not oral, um, like they do the stimming with their voice. They they go they, they make the humming noises, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. So like, mm, or they scream mm -hmm. and and um, mm -hmm. which is okay for them and and that's fine. But Aiden gets uh, overstimulated with that, and then the thing with him is like he tries to get the kid to calm down or be quiet, and then hit it comes off as aggression, right? Right. So he'll go and hug the kid really tightly, especially if they're crying and screaming. He'll hug them really tightly to, to make them stop. Mm -hmm. But it comes off, they think they're choking. He's choking them. Mm -hmm. So I was like, of he course. needs to get in a in a setting where, where you know, the kids are not necessarily doing that. So, um, yeah, he got he got placed in a new setting. He's doing really, really well. That's and, um, great. To the point that <laughs> I actually sent Sandy a video of him. He... Um, decided to participate in the talent show for school and oh, he came up with cool. his own dance. Mr. Aiden started oh. doing the, the jellyfish dance from SpongeBob oh. and they let him record. He let them record him and, and like they played it for the, um for the thing. And I feel like since he started junior high school, yeah, he had a hard time transitioning at the beginning, but there's been so much growth and he's come into his own personality and, and his own little thing, like, of who he is. Like, I feel like now we're seeing more. Like, the whole audio, the video editing thing, he taught himself. I didn't teach him audio editing. Right. I'm just learning it now with the podcast. But he knows how to, like, play a video, get the audio from the TV, and then record it with his phone to have the little video. And then he there's YouTube videos for that. I'm like, who likes to That's watch amazing. that? Apparently, a lot of people... <laughs> So right. he has he has all these little videos that he does. I feel like I'm gonna open up. I have to come up with a logo for him, but like open up a YouTube channel so that he can start posting content. You that never know; great. it's something that he yeah. likes. Exactly. All right, yeah, guys. So he's good he's at so it. So smart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm so I'm like I I love like getting to know like the stories of all, all the other kids too because it's like there was something that the people from the, the one of the actors from As We See It he said. Once you know one person with autism, you only you just know one person with autism. Everybody's so different because it is a spectrum, and I'd really enjoy like getting to know all the different children and and people with autism, which is like it's yeah. just really incredible to me. Right, and, and with, the stories. Yeah, it's so interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, and with that, we're gonna end the show. Um, Everybody knows how to get in contact with me already. Comadres, you can follow me at Comadre on the pod on Instagram. And if you have any questions from my guests today, please feel free to send me a comadregram at my email at comadreando at ESCthenetwork.com or DM me. Um, I don't know if you guys want to drop your socials. You can or you don't have to. It's up to you. <laughs> 
I feel like you you usually tag me on Instagram. So if you if right. you have Marcy, you you'll find me. <laughs> okay. Right, just the um, forward it to me. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. Cool. All right, and I want to thank you for spending an afternoon with your comadre and your comadres and your compadre, and um, <laughs> I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.